I just want to make a short, uh, maybe disclaimer before our uh, chat that uh, we're not gonna tell any like uh, super secrets or something. We're gonna talk about the information that everybody knows. It's like, you know, when you go to a psychotherapist and they say like, get a good sleep, eat well and do sport and you will feel better. So this is pretty much like, and you say, no, this doesn't sound right. But when you actually start doing it, you actually no, start to live better. You burn out. Then like yeah, but after therapy, you try it, <laughs> after a year of therapy, you start actually like fixing your sleep, and then it's like. Actually oh, actually, works. yeah, they, they were right. So this is the same. It's like basically very basic advices. But if, if, in case you start doing them, oh my God. You will not burn out. Yeah, maybe. maybe and maybe you will not fail as a studio. So yes, maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe it uh, would be a good start to talk why we are good enough to talk about this. Yeah, <laughs> and what is this going on and behind us? We are good enough to talk about this because we have been watching these people fail miserably for about a year. Yeah, for a year we are basically that's our profession to look how other <laughs> how people fail. <laughs> yeah. How people fail. And, uh, so we are founders of Game Dev Camp. This is the online games incubator. We get people for like actually she does that currently form Steam out of that. Um, bring in mentors, give them structure, and help them actually not to fail. So that's our goal, and they usually try to not listen to us and fail miserably, and then we yes. collect this knowledge and present to you. Yes. So, you know, we are like uh, playing uh, Sims from the God mode. We look at them up there, what they're doing, looking at them and see that because every season we have same mistakes over and over again. It's like a um, few pillars that all their success, basically their success was holding on and they always fail with that. Yeah. Because it is natural, like, like to make a game, it is natural to go the way these people are going through. And this is usually means like going to the cliff and jumping from the cliff. And then like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> so yeah. yes, making games is very hard, but... These people know they're making games. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start from the bad advices, maybe. Uh, okay, so I think the main, the main thing uh, that our uh, participants that were making those games uh, failed was the lack of clear vision to what no, well, I mean, they No, I mean, they, le they had vision. They had uh, vision, yes. Just different. Like each team member had a vision. And of their even, game. But they even talk to each other, but it didn't help. Yeah, because uh, all of them think that they're making actually completely different games. And when you ask a uh, programmer, artist, and game designer uh, separately what kind of game you're making, they're giving completely different answers And to this those is questions. fun because we have these mentorship sessions where like programmers go to talk to programmers, whatever, I mean about code. Artists go for art review sessions and game designers go to producers and to game designers like from this bigger companies to show their games. And I mean, I attend like, I Eva's drop on the sessions, and I see that like the finest part is actually a programmer. So like, I mean, the game designer talks like with whole vision. Then the artist is like, I don't know what the game is about, but this is the art I'm making. And the programmer is usually making a completely different game. Yeah, like just completely. Yeah, he like or she adds completely different features, but that's uh, for the talk. So yeah, like uh, first of all, you need to understand and uh, be sure that you, first of all, because sometimes we also ask questions of our game designers, what kind of game you are making. And if we dive a little bit deeper into this topic, they understand they don't understand what kind of game you, they are making. So uh, first of all, you then make sure that all of your teammates can actually tell what kind of game you are making. Yeah. So basically ask your team to tell you what you all together are making. Double and check. Is, and it sounds very stupid. It sounds like talking with a parrot or something. Nobody understands why we are doing this. It's useless. But believe me, they don't know what kind yes. of game you're making. After several months of working together on a game, your team usually thinks you're making different games. Like, that's what we have learned. And that's very common, very, very common. Also, the second problem out of this like uh, vision thingy is about uh, why you're making this game. Also a very complicated question. And also it's changing, because you have started making this game because you wanted to make a Fallout clone or whatever, a new Witcher, um, with a team of three, but that's a different <laughs> discussion. And 
And then it evolves because, I mean, somebody got a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Somebody decided to go into, like, to drop out of the university or, like, somebody found a new job. And suddenly this passion project is not a passion anymore. So, like, unless you continue bringing up these problems, like, why are you here? Why are you on my team? Well, then you misalign. Yes, and also you have to be like honest with yourself. Are you making this game just for fun or are you actually planning to ship? Or maybe like not shipping is not the worst case scenario. You can show cases yes. still. Um, um, and, and disclaimer, obviously we're talking from this indie games perspective. It's yeah, like obviously. If you have endless <laughs> budgets and money and a publisher, like that's not the talk for you. Yeah, that's, that's like not, for, not the, for you. For those who are like start thinking, trying like to make this indie game company, start your own thing. Yes, and uh, my a little bit one thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, that we give this advice also to everyone, but even our company is not doing this always, uh, as we both write everything down. All your decisions, like if, even if you change something, like, okay, we decided that we don't want this feature, write this down, like make some document and write like 10th of July, we decided we're not doing this kind of feature because so later on you can take your programmer, bring to this document, point out, like, look, we are not making explosions. We decided this, 10th of July. She's telling about this so patiently because like, that's what she does with me. It's like, I mean, like this is like, <laughs> what we decided. And I'm like, okay. Yes. And uh, yeah, so like, it is true, like, whatever. I know every two months I come up with some genius idea and you're like, silent, like this is what we decided. <laughs> yes. So it works. It's amazing. Yeah, I but maybe it. if you would write it down, it would be easier. <laughs> Actually, I would not have to point out. So yeah, write all the decisions. Uh, write everything that you know about your game, like GDD. Uh, it's like you can write it anywhere. Well, that's very obvious still. Not all, everyone do does this. Sounds very stupid, but once again, we are pointing out uh, every time, each season to each team, please write everything. Same with, goes with deadlines. That's also a very complicated thing for everyone. Can I poke you about the GGD because like, ah, this documentation is boring, it's hard, so like... So, uh, well, it will help you first of all understand once again that you're making, when you write down, you see the clear idea, clear vision, your team can read it, finally, like the clear idea, what you're doing, why you're doing, what's there, what's yeah. in the game. And I just want to point out that GGD doesn't have to be like this beautiful ideal document with everything structured because it costs time to maintain that. But like if you have like a way of just like dropping stuff in, it can be whatever, a folder, or, like a notion, I know, even a Discord channel. So for example, in our process, in, in our company, we just have a lot of Discord threads with, with logs and yeah, so it can be pretty much anything. And like the deadlines. Uh, also, definition of deadlines for all the teams is completely different. Definition of done. Because yeah. like the deadline is like we're shipping this. So like if the date is sort of understandable, but what we're shipping by this date, that's the thing. That's the hard thing. And what's the consequences? So because not everyone understands what are the consequences if we are not shipping this. So if you tell to your team, like, here you are, here are the consequences. You are not going to go with me to the conference, let's say, because yeah, you haven't finished I want to double and triple it. down on the consequences thing, because, like, the deadline itself, well, it's a deadline, but sometimes you have to miss it. Why? Because, like, for example, the definition of done, you don't fulfill the definition of done, but then you need to decide, so, like, we're not making it in time, what does it mean? Does it mean we have to crunch, or does it mean we have to push back the deadline? And uh, so, like, the consequence of things, like, like, what, we're not shipping, so what? Or we're shipping, and also, so what? So, like, the, I mean, I'm, I'm re re telling this for the tenth time, probably, right now, repeating it, because it's like, that's people, that's the thing that is counterintuitive, and that's what people don't do. Yes, and, and it doesn't matter if you're senior, junior, or middle, uh, everyone makes these mistakes. Especially you've been working in the company, you're used to that somebody's taking care of you, and like, uh, while you're doing by yourself, you have to face the consequences, like, oh, we don't have a game. Well, so yeah, uh, we've been talking about uh, the first, like, basically pillar is like clear vision. Secondly, uh, what how to fail is basically your team and chemistry. We talked about briefly already, but that's oh, yeah. I think that's the most important one, actually. Team chemistry, yeah, because this is a living and breathing well thing. organism. Yes, thing, and you evolve as people. You 
get better at some things and worse at some things. And uh, I mean, it's people, I mean, making game is fun. Everybody like artists, is drawing, programmers, programming, game designers, write, writing in a Google document. Like everybody had their job, but like how do you function all together? That's the hard part. Even if you can be like the best friends forever before the, ca uh, before the actual uh, starting making the game, but after? Yeah, but I mean, it's easy to say, hey, be good with people. I mean, it's hard being good with people. Do we have any tips? Uh, well, the hardest uh, and like the most obvious, once again, just talk. Yeah, and I mean, we force um, game designers to do this work within our teams. We, I mean, and force is, 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 is the right verb here. We said like, look, you are the leader. If there is a problem, it's you who is responsible. Like, not a programmer, yes, like, you didn't make it because the programmer didn't make it in time, whatever, with the code, but it, it is you, game designer, sh who should have spoken, who should have thought about it. But, like, it's usually for us, but it, uh, in other teams it might be, like, anyone else. The programmer might be the lead one. It, it's not that important, but, yeah, somebody has to take a lead and uh, look after everyone and be sure that everybody is okay and, uh, well, First of all, motivated, and it's not only about the money. So, like, it's not like if you're gonna raise the salary to some of your friends, workers, it's not gonna quite help. If the person doesn't have, have a clear motivation, not only about money, they won't work, yeah. and the motivation might change. This is also. And we're getting like to the first part of what we started. It's like remember why you're making it and like talk about it again and again and again. I mean, even with, with Game Dev Camp, like our startup, like we decide, we come back to this very basic question. I mean, like two years after doing it, we're like, so why are we doing it again? What are we doing actually? <laughs> and what are we not doing actually? So like, that's a very important part too. So like two years, we continuously talk about it. And- uh, We forced to do our teams the same because that quite helps. And we actually, by this reduced the, the churn? Yeah, like the percentage of failed teams. So first season was 50% of teams actually 50 failed. 50 percent, imagine, like when we started, like, in, like inviting these people making teams, 50% of teams didn't actually ship. But, and, yeah, and, and but then what we did? Uh, actually, we forced them to talk in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it sounds as creepy as it is in practice. Like yes. we forced them to talk in front of us. I mean, imagine talking like when somebody's watching and like you're like having the therapy session and then somebody is like watching on you. So that's what we do. Yeah, that's uh, what we actually do. And uh, so yeah, except that everybody is different. Programmers want to do some random stuff that is interested only for them. Like uh, they are come up uh, like, oh, now we have explosions, but like we don't have explosions in our game. Uh, this is not a joke. This is true This story. is not a joke. The team was, uh, this team shipped, but it was whatever, two weeks until the demo day. And the programmer was like, hey, I found a new ways like to, to, to make fires in the game. And the game designer was like, but we don't have explosions in the game. And the programmer was like, yeah, but the fires are so beautiful. It looks so cool. It's, look at the code. It's so clean and beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, yeah, uh, same goes with artists. They're not also perfect. Uh, they sometimes also, I don't know why, common problem. They disappear for a week, then randomly appear. And they're like, look, what have I drawn? And it's a lot of stuff. Very beautiful, but not related to the game at all. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the game designer is like, what? <laughs> and the program is like, what do I have to do now? <laughs> and, uh, and, the and the artist is like, yeah, but this is so beautiful. It is beautiful. It is very beautiful. But like, what do we do with this now? Like, do we like, yeah, what do we do? Because it doesn't fit into the game and there are deadlines. Like, and they, yeah, it's an, and then we force game designers to figure it out. And everybody thinks that game designers are annoying. Because why they're running around all the time and like asking some stupid questions, what is going on, forcing me to do something. So that is- So like, that's what they do. They tell you like, beautiful art, but no. A random piece of code and unknowing game designer. This is pretty much the usual team of uh, indie team. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why, I mean, that's why we force it on game designers. Pretty much because uh, that's why we force actually them to talk in front of us because we see who is wrong and we can point out and it's very easy. But like uh, yeah, we learn their personalities. I mean, honestly, that's yeah. what we do. Uh, and uh, one more thing that is not very obvious, but sometimes if you actually hire more people, it might not actually help you. 
Usually, yeah, because I mean, you have still one game designer. You're like the programmers who are making explosions that you don't have in the game. Yeah, and making some random art. Yeah, uh, and that with is not more related. artists. I mean, it's just like more management layers. I mean, if you have even two artists, one of them subconsciously wants to lead, it, he or she wants, like, this is my style. Yeah, so they that's fight for the. Yeah, so that's why our teams is usually one programmer, one 2D artist, one 3D artist, and one game designer. So they, it's so obvious that, that like, if the code is missing, this, this person, is you. You're yeah. the only one who is making it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, yeah, sometimes they split responsibilities, but still, like, there is one person who owns this. And it, uh, it uh, simplifies a lot. And uh, so, yeah, uh, we can slowly move to the third what, important thing. Shipping? No, not yet. Actually, <laughs> I, don't, I call it isolation. I mean, not yet, because Indies never ship. Like, yeah, just yeah, yeah. Like that, that, that's like, obvious, no. so this is why. Uh, I call it isolation. Uh, so basically, when you just hide somewhere, as a team, not as a person, as a team. Like yeah. you, because making game, I mean, after a while, it becomes so pleasant that you're just making this game. You enjoy yourself. You're like, oh my god, we're so great. You're doing something like our game is so amazing, and you don't show it to anybody. You're like, we will show it later. It's not ready. It's not right. Usually, it's not ready. It's yeah. never ready. You don't even share the idea, so you never get the feedback. So you never know that your game actually is shit. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So, and that's why we force our teams to talk to different people multiple times a week, again and again and again, show your game. Like Yeah, that sounds very much like advertisement for me. That's not what I wanted, honestly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what my advice would be like, just actually go out, like touch grass, talk with people, uh, show your game idea to maybe, like at least to your mom, to your friends, get at least something. You don't need to listen to everything that people say. It's not mandatory, but at least try saying that. Uh, at least, like go to con meetups, oh my God, conferences, meet people, talk about your game idea. Crazy, if you have a prototype, build it as quick as possible with cubes and show it also, let people play it, tell, like show them. Yes. Yes. Get the feedback. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't listen to it, but get it. Yeah. You, you, because, I mean, it's your game after all. Yeah, well, if you like it, you like it. I mean, uh, I will give one example of the... Uh, I promise not to... Swear? No, no, no. <laughs> Talk that much about game that I'm very sorry. But it's a very good example of one team uh, that uh, all mentors were saying, like, you won't be able to make this game. You won't. And they'd be like, no, we will. No, we will, and ev nobody believed them. Including like, us. Yeah, like we were like, okay, let, well, we will let them fail, it's okay. Like nothing. Because that's, yeah, that's why, that's, that's the process. In yeah, the like, because nothing will happen, like, uh, nothing will collapse, like, yeah. you fail, be you fail. They better fail within the camp than, you know, when In real life, yeah. so, yeah. Uh, and uh, and they actually shipped it, and we, everybody were surprised, everybody. Uh, so we invited uh, a lot of our mentors to the demo day where they're like, showing showcasing the games, and they were like, "Whoa, I I didn't expect it to be yeah. there." Yeah, uh, and uh, spoiler, like it happened because this particular team that she has in mind, they just had a lot of art, and their game was like just cubes and you know props, random props, and then they just crunched for the for the last two weeks to put in all art, and then it just like suddenly it worked. They've but been working actually quite a lot, but that's not important. So yeah, and uh, don't be afraid to ask stupid questions. The thing that we learned that the most stupid questions are the most useful ones. Yes, and probably so they're going to be a lead to the Q&A, but... <laughs> <laughs> so if you think that this stupid question is like very stupid... That's a good one. That's, that's the best one, one, probably. That's probably the best one that everybody is shy to ask. Like, go for it. Um, so yeah, you want to talk about shipping. But Indies never ship, they just make a game. <laughs> yeah, making a ga game and shipping is quite different things. It's different process, like different mindset, different everything. And uh, Because making a game is, it might, it's hard, but at least yeah. fun. I guess like one thing that I want to point that like all the teams who apply for the camp, they're like, we, we totally want like to ship this game and that's what we want. And like, yeah, yeah, we're aligned, like we want to ship this game by the end of the camp. They're like, Okay, sh no, no, I just want to find a job. I don't want to be an industry. Yeah, I don't want to figure out with lawyers, money, invent, publish. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Only like few brave ones who are like, no, we are ready for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have so a booth. shipping shipping <laughs> is like hard. It's boring. You have to everybody to is actually angry. work. You have to yeah, actually work. You, everybody angry at each other. You have to do this feature. No, you, my feature is most important. No, this art is supposed to be here. Why nobody is working? Why I'm the only one who is working? Everybody is arguing deadlines. Everybody crying, fight. crunching, uh, crunching, and then you go to depression. <laughs> it's not like I, I'm not promoting you not to ship the game. Actually, we promote to ship the game. In any case, yeah. like. Not you just need to understand that this is hard. This is harder than making. Like, I mean, you enjoy the process. It's not supposed to be maybe commercial. You can wrap it up so it would be like pretty and you can showcase it in art performances. And we're back to the definition of done and the motivation and the reasons. So shall we consider this presentation looped? Yes, uh, that's what I was talking about. There's like literally three pillars that everything is standing on. I'm ready. You counting because I was talking yes, too much. Yes, I'm ready to. So, like, yeah, count one. One. <laughs> <laughs> what? Try, try one more time. <laughs> one. <laughs> you did your best. So yes, uh, basically motivation. One. Second one. Two. <laughs> Imagine I'm working with him. <laughs> 20%, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, motivation, you have to talk with each other. What was the third one? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, ship the game. No, I mean, like, yes, honestly, uh, just wrap it up. Make something out of it. Even if it doesn't bring you commercial success, put it in your portfolio. Make it look pretty. I read our notes. Uh, the hard part was that nobody knows how to make a game. Yes. And uh, Fabzi, who you have seen just before, like in this room, like we have discussed with him just recently, after all these years in the industry, like nobody knows how to make a game. So it's, it is really hard. So like if you're feeling like totally imposter, very young or something or very experienced, like no. Really? Especially I think the uh, more you know, the less you know. Yeah, exactly. So, like so making games is hard and shall we <laughs> just, I mean, because like we're, we're looped. Shall we go to the clever questions? Yes. Yes, please. Let's go. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do we have any questions from the audience right now? Yeah. I like when people ask. Uh, so it would be not a question. I think it's a uh, next, I don't know, next point, next advice, how to fail your studio in the project. I think uh, it's only, it's it's very, Important. Uh, all indies think think that they are next one. They are new Kazima. Every Obviously, time, yeah. every <laughs> time. No advices. No no feedback. It's your feedback is sh is totally shit. Is I I know I know what I do. I know it's a, it's the next one game, big game, and something like that. So my advice: how to uh, how to get success, how to have a success. Go to big company work uh, get experience and after if you this monster <laughs> doesn't doesn't eat it uh, you are ready to to do your pet project your own studio your own games because uh, all problems you mentioned uh, it's it's very easy to solve it's very easy to improve uh, working in a big company and get experience he that's my that's my advice. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. It just sounds how he's feeling the pain that we were like sharing. <laughs> so yeah. Anybody else? Did has you felt fail this your pain? indie studio? Uh, how many indie studios have you failed? Uh, I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's just recruiting. Uh, I see. So any other pains? Yeah, I mean, like you have to have a passion to work in indie. You actually have to be like, yeah, I'm ready to crunch. I'm ready to cry all the time. Or well, you yeah. make it a pa like a, a side project. So like, I mean, like the ultimate, like you just don't lie to yourself that this is a commercial thing. So you get a job and make this like as a side project. Yes, and, and, which and is then, totally yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Um, I just want more pains. <laughs> from, the, from, from, the audio, uh, from the audience, yeah. Because I mean, like we, we had this therapy session. So did, did you... What did you resonate with? Like, was there anything that was said that you felt like, yeah, it was totally me? I would like to ask, like, what would you recommend as a way of talking and doing these therapy sessions? Like, how do you go about it? How do you do it? <clears throat> yeah, we just, 
Yeah, we emotionally abuse our students. Let's put it this way. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, that's half joke, actually. Uh, we put them together, and we watch them talk. We, like, let me assemble my mind. Uh, praise publicly, give negative feedback personally, um, and just, like, and then get annoyed and tell them what to do directly. But if we are talking and about, so let's say, uh, in our case scenario, like yeah. uh, two founders, it was it ha we had a lot of hard times. <laughs> Why yeah. are you talking in past tense? Uh, well, st now it's a little bit better, but before it was like uh, we've been arguing a lot, like a lot, maybe every day talking, arguing, maybe half of the hour working day was like arguing, literally. Now it's better. Now he knows that I'm always right. <laughs> It kind of... <laughs> I mean, she writes everything down. So, like, <laughs> how can I argue now? So, uh, it uh, kind of saves time. But, yeah, I think maybe first, at least half of year, maybe, it was the hardest part. Like, literally arguing. Yeah, so, like, it's it's a process, like... It's a process. There is, like, maybe there is, like, uh, some uh, psychologist can tell you how to speed it up and make it better. Uh, sadly, we are not psychologists to tell you how to communicate better. Yeah, but like what we see from our teams and from ourselves is like like you start somewhere and then you just evolve. start talking and somewhere yeah. you you will. The difference end between up us and somewhere. our teams is that like nobody told us how to do it. Yes, and we're sort of like trying like to guide the teams, and they're like, no, we want to go our wrong, our own wrong way, and we're like, mm, you have three months, no, don't mm -hmm. die yet. Another short question. Sure. So, like, what kept you together if it was so hard? Masochism? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think it was uh, the motivation, the thing that we talked about. Uh, we really wanted to make uh, something like that. Also, this project was evolving, like, as a camp, it was evolving a lot. Uh, it was completely different, maybe a year and a half ago, at least. Uh, so yeah, gonna evolve more. I mean, um, making a game or making a startup is like the same thing. Like you cannot not make it. It's like if you, you have a feeling like I really want to make it, nothing will stop you. Even like uh, even her. Thank you very much for your presentation and thank you very much for the questions. Uh